can see it or not. So you're going to be my eyes and ears for today. I can see your screen. Awesome. Brilliant. Well, welcome to Property Question Time, guys. We are just waiting for our panel members to arrive in the meantime as well. Um, and I'm still waiting for my sponsors as well. So I think a lot of them have actually got some online meetings. So they'll be joining us, I think, a little bit later on. Um, instead of 9.30, I think they'll be joining us around 10 o'clock this morning. So um, thank you very much. Let's start. Right. Okay. Um, as always, we are going to be streaming at this event um, because of the current pandemic of COVID-19. So we just want to thank every single person for the cooperation. It's not easy doing online events. We completely understand everyone's commitments as well, the speakers and our guests as well. So thank you so much for taking time out of your schedules and being with us today. Right, um, we are going to put everyone on mute this morning so that the event runs on time. Um, everyone is going to be muted. Now you will have an opportunity to ask the panel members questions. At the bottom of your um, screen there is a Q&A tab. So if you have any questions you would like to ask the panel members or if you can't hear us or can't see one of the panel members, just type a question and we will pick that up as well. Um, of course, you are also invited to the panel later on as well at the Q&A session. But in the meantime, you guys are all muted just to make sure that the event does run on time without any disturbances. Um, we want to know, of course, this is a networking session as well, which is quite different to the session that we would do in a room. But we would like to know as well during the event whose first time it is joining us on Property Question Time because we do see a lot of new faces and a lot of new names as well during the year. So it's nice to know um, who's actually attending the um, webinar for the first time. Now, Property Question Time has been running for many years. Um, we actually had Elisa, it's your first time. Thank you for joining us. A lot of raising hands here. Uh, we've actually been running Property Question Time for many years now. Um, and we only ran one in the room this year in February. And the rest of the seven events have been streamed online. So we never thought we would be still streaming events at the end of the year um, on Zoom. But here we are, guys. And if you don't believe me, this is what the room used to look like, which feels like an eternity time away but um this is back in february right sam i mean this is what the room would look like we'd have a packed out room 500 people attending property question time um as you can see we've got a panel um of property experts as well so we do miss the room we don't know when we're going to go back but um it was always super successful so i think even for you sam it must feel like such a long time ago when we were in the room hosting events right absolutely it feels like a, a such like a long that. time ago yeah it's, and this was the first one of 2020 um and it i mean what there was over 500 people we've had i mean we're like right you know it's going to be a really good year um and you know what to be honest with you sam the online events as you know you've been hosting them with myself as well and allowing me to host them independently um but we've seen how many people have actually been logging in um and the results have just been phenomenal so um it's all thanks to everyone the sponsors and the speakers and and the attendees as well so thank you very much i'm just going to go through questions so like i mentioned earlier you all are going to be a mute if you've got any questions during the event you don't have to wait till q a um you can use the q a tab at the bottom to ask any questions to the panel members um the agenda today um we are a little bit late but we are doing our registration and networking and a little introduction now um i'm waiting for a couple of sponsors i know sam can see the list i'm not sure if they're online already but we're going to wait for the sponsors um to arrive and they can do their brief introduction in the meantime at 9 45 till about 10 ish we've got mike who's going to be doing his presentation about social housing opportunities in 2021 um followed by mike we've also got um david who is the founder of eig and he's going to do a presentation about how auctions have worked online because this year has just always been about online so we're going to look at numbers and figures and predictions for the next year as well um then we've got Andrew Binstock who's going to be making an appearance around 10.30. Uh, might be a little bit later, might be a bit earlier because it is also the day of the auction as well. So he's going to come in and we're going to have a quick recap as well on some of the very popular lots for this year as well. Um, 
sorry, the timing's a little bit wrong, but around 11 o'clock, we're going to have a Q&A session as well for one hour. So for those who would like to join us, you just will unmute you. You can join the panel and ask the panel members or ask, the, ask your host any questions related to the subjects that we are presenting today. All right. Um, Sam, can you see our sponsors on? Uh, yes, I see other sponsors, yes. Brilliant. I'm... Oh, you mean, uh, okay, online, they haven't come online yet. No? All because right, we're just going to wait. I think we're going to change... Just continue to introduce the, uh, the, um, um, the event, yeah. Sure, no problem. So, guys, um, as you know, we've got David Binstock here today, um, Mike Frisbee, David, and your host, Sam, as well, that are going to be presenting. Um, it's all about um, how to make property work for you. Um, looking at future predictions for 2021, looking at property auctions, um, online and offline as well. Now, speakers are going to go into a lot more detail about this, but I think, Sam, the rest of it now is um, over to you, really, and I think it's probably a good time to talk about Midas, who we are, and really what we do. So, over to you, Sam. Okay. So, okay. Th thank you, um, Ati. It's been um, a very interesting year, uh, very different year, not one that we actually um, predicted. Um, while we wait for our sponsors to do their uh, presentation uh, pitches, uh, I'm just going to go through a bit about Midas, what Midas actually uh, does. Um, uh, you still got Artie's screen, so I'm not going to share my screen, so you've got Artie's one. So Artie, I'm going to ask you to move to the next slide when I need to. Um, Absolutely fine. Really, um, Midas, we, we do just a few, we do a lot of things, but they all boil down to um, one, we do a lot of events. Uh, we do our events with councils, uh, Harrow, Brand, Barnett, most of the boroughs in London who've done events with them. We are actually in discussion to do a virtual event for, for a few councils at the beginning of next year. And most of the council events that we do, we have probably about 500 to 600 attendees when we did them in a room. So we, we're hoping to maybe get a bigger number by doing it online. Um, and then of course we do these events with Auction House and a few other um, auction companies just before the auction starts. And all these events, we do them all free events. Um, we use them as a business development tool to get known by ourselves and, and be able to, pro to propose our services to you. Um, how do we then monetize our presence in the market? We are effectively uh, an acquisition and a disposal agency. We actually help uh, our clients, i.e. yourselves on the event, acquire properties. If any of you are looking at maybe uh, investing in properties, uh, you want someone that can be your, your team member without being on a, on, a, on a salary, we actually do that fantastically well. Uh, once we know what exactly you're looking for um, across the UK, uh, we've got a network of, um, um, of um, associates that we work with across the UK. We can actually go to them uh, to get you the best properties across the UK, the best investment properties in uh, Yorkshire, in, uh, in London, in Wolverhampton, in Western Supermare, Bristol. We do that uh, for, for a fee, of course, we will normally charge about 2% or minimum of £5,000. Um, if you're looking at selling as well, we actually help with disposals. We normally would probably have someone that wants to buy the property, or we can actually help you list with, um, with, with, uh, with, with the uh, with auctions. We, t we trade a lot at Auction House London. And um, most people might say, Sam, why should we come to Midas as opposed to going straight to the auction uh, company ourselves? There's all sorts of good reasons why is you're better off selling through us as our as mediators because we would make sure that your property gets the best attention um, in the sense that the um, um, auctioneers are often very busy. They get lots of lots. You need someone that can actually liaise between the auctioneers and your solicitors to make sure they get the right legal pack, make sure everything is done right. Uh, and that's what we, we do for you, actually, to, to support you, uh, make sure that your property actually gets the best attention. Um, yeah, so if you're looking at buying or selling a property, uh, if you're looking at building up your portfolio, please talk to us um, after the event. We would help yourself. Um, while we're still um, 
got a few more minutes, we can um, look at our upcoming events. Um, Ati, do you want to go through the upcoming events, please? Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know a lot of people are filling in the diaries already for next year. Um, we are just still waiting for a couple of more. Well, we're actually waiting for the dates for property question time for next year as well. So as soon as they are published, we will be sharing them as well. Um, now, we've got a few events coming up. I am not sure about the dates, but we are working with Simon for a webinar about um, a purchase lease option, and that's going to be in January. Um, we're also working with Mike as well um, about social housing opportunities. So we've got some dates for this side of the year and for next year as well. And I think next year, Sam, have you got some dates already for... We've got, we've got an event on Mike tomorrow evening. Tomorrow, yeah. I'm going to come to that in a second. But for next year as well, we've also got how to buy and sell at auction. So if one of your New Year's resolutions is, yes, I would like to buy or sell or extend or reduce my property portfolio, then make sure you get in contact with us because we've got some more webinars on how to buy and sell at property auction. But um, hang on, we've also got... An event tomorrow as well with Mike as our guest speaker. Um, we're going to be talking about social housing. Um, it's a really exciting topic, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. But it starts at 7:30 in the evening, 7:30, 8 o'clock. And I think um, actually, I think with what's happening now in the current economy, uh, where um, there's a lot of uncertainty as to um, um, who will still be in that job come March next year. There's never been a, a greater need to understand how the social housing industry works, which is something that Mark, Mike does fantastically well. So come March, if you have a good tenant that has been in employment and they get made redundant for any reason, there's no need to panic. All you need to know is how you can um, claim the most for that family. And that's what Mike talks about. So Mark will tell you, how you can get the most out of a situation that you have no control over. So we are bracing ourselves for a future uh, in the next couple of months where uh, a lot more tenants that we're able to pay their rent will not be able to pay. It. So it, the, the years gone by, it was a choice. Do you want social tenants or not? But we strongly believe come March next year, some people might not have that choice. It's been made for you. Your tenants have been happily paying rents will become social landlords. How do you deal with that? Do you get them out of the property? You might not have the chance to get them out. It will take you a long time to get them out. Your best bet will be to understand how best to make the most out of the situation. So please don't hesitate to come on tomorrow. You can have um, Mike will do a presentation for about an hour and we'll have about an hour of Q&A so you can ask as much questions as you wish uh, on social housing. So, okay. It's a very detailed um, event tomorrow, very detailed, talking very about detailed. a lot of things, especially furlough is one of the popular subjects we're going to be talking about as well. Um, with, with that coming to an end in March as well, right? So yes. that's going to be covered as well. So the details for the Zoom link for this, we will send it out after today's property question time. Um, and dates for the diary as well, they're going to be sent out to our attendees um, in a couple of weeks in a couple of weeks time. So those are the upcoming events that we've got. How are we doing for time, Sam? Have we got I'm, any? I'm not seeing not seen Ranjit on. Um... Oh no, that's unlike Ranjit. I have messaged him. So we've also got um, Yasmin who's gonna be joining us in a couple of minutes, Sam. Yeah. Um, yeah, an event is not an event without Ranjit. Cause Ranjit <laughs> makes an event an event. So- um... Can we talk on his behalf? Well, uh, I think property, no, I don't think I'm qualified to uh, <laughs> talk on Ranji's You won't justify behalf. his, you won't justify very, him. Ranji's speech is very unique. Uh, he, he's the only one that can do it. Uh, okay. All right. We, um, well, okay, if, if without our sponsors, we can talk about the market. If you look at the, the market, let's just discuss the market. It'd be quite interesting to um, maybe get one or two views from the uh, from the audience. Um, we are in very uncertain times in the market. Um, the market is very highly heated, especially in London. Uh, investors are struggling to buy anything because owner occupiers are very um, uh, sentiment driven, and they're buying everything in North London. Um, 
I was having a chat with uh, one or two estate agents and they're saying they're having to sell on a second and on, on a third attempt because uh, at times deals are not going through. Um, and when we talk about the market, one of the most common questions that I always get people ask me is, when is the best time to buy? Some people say March is the best time to buy, but they're going to wait until March. For me, I say the best time to buy is when you have a good deal because the property industry is different from the stock market. So that's why no one ever gets prosecuted for inside dealing in the property market like they do with the stock market. Because if someone tells you that the stocks are gonna to drop tomorrow, sell or buy, you can do that. But if I tell you that property prices will drop next week, what do you do? You cannot buy a property that's not on the market for sell. And if a property is on the market for sell, you cannot, or if you have a property to sell, you cannot sell overnight because you haven't got a buyer. So the property industry is much slower. No one can actually wait for the bottom of the market. You have to buy at the right time. If the right property comes, you, can't, you have to transact. You cannot wait for the bottom of the market because you, can't, you cannot predict and know the bottom of the market. Usually, the best time for the, to buy in the market is always yesterday because you can only tell historically. You can never tell the bottom of the market. So. I think with that, with that rambling on and on, I think if you do have a property, if you have the resources to invest in properties, the best time to do it is now. There's absolutely no point waiting to, for the bottom of the market to come because you will not know when it comes. Maybe we already had the bottom yesterday. We will not know, we can only know in about a few months that that was the bottom. So please, in property transactions, the best time to buy is now. Okay, uh, Ati? So, um, do you have anyone on the, on the on the? Do you want to take any view from the from the audience? We had a raised hand actually. Um, just trying to see. Um, got some good mornings. I don't think he's online at the moment. Um, but yeah, if anyone's got any questions at the moment, anyone wants to share the, the opinion of the market right now, in you can 96? just raise your hand, and we'll put you on the on the panel. Maybe. I think everyone's being a bit shy this morning. Oh, we've got a couple of raised hands. Um, we had his hand up before, but maybe we can, raise, we can lower the hands and see if anyone... Yeah, I've hand. done that. So, okay, we've got um, Ken and OB as well. There you go. Okay. So if you want to unmute yourself, guys, and you want to share your opinion, please. Yeah, 90 seconds, please, just before we, uh, we get Mike on. Good to see you, Mike. You are on mute. <laughs> Quoting Artie. Yeah. Yes, yes. I was yeah, I heard her saying she's gonna mute everybody. I forgot she yeah. muted me. Yeah, I'll see. Oh sorry about that. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. No, no, good to see you. Okay, um Ken, um have they come on for 90 seconds to say what they think of the market right now? I think they've gone all shy now. Okay. Um if, if they haven't if, then Obi, we've got you here. If you want to unmute yourself, please and um would like to share your opinions. There's a little tab on the side which allows you to unmute. No, I think they've gone all shy now. Okay, that's, oh, okay, we've got Vince. Oh, there you go. Hi, Obi. Hi, good morning, Arthur. Good morning, morning. Yeah. Uh, hi, son, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so we had a little chat yesterday on good things. Sorry? Yeah. yeah, we had a little chat last evening, if you remember. Okay, okay. Yeah. I have lots so, of chat. Great chat, yes. Okay. So, um, I was telling you about my attempt to buy a new build in, um, in the, uh, remember, you've got Bishop, 90, 90 Bishop seconds. Auckland. Yes, 90 Bishop seconds. Auckland. Yeah, okay. and then you advised that I should, uh, uh, wait on that and uh, go for um, old traditional building. Okay. So my question is, I have some money um, in the bank and I've been trying on auctions, which has not been working for me. And what is the best approach for me to get into the market now and, um, you know, uh, try to build up my portfolio? Okay. I think what we do, um, um, 
up is that we'll take your question during the Q&A. We just wanted someone to comment about how the market, what is the current view of the market? I, I, I went on, on and on, spoke about my um, uh, view of the market. I just, we just wanted someone to say their experience in the market, if the market is overheated, what they're doing. But your question is a very important one, Obi. I'm going to, I, I will pick on it at the end, doing the q and I will definitely answer your question at the q and I think we, yeah, now I remember the conversation yesterday after you asked that question. At times you have so many conversations a day, but yes, I remember. So I'm going to come to you uh, with the Q&A. Uh, during the q and I'll come back to your question. But right now we, um, Okay, We've I got Vincent. If we, uh, Vincent, he's um, unmuted. If you got a... yeah, so Vincent, what's your view of the market? Ninety seconds, please. Yeah, uh, I, I think the, my opinion in the market. The market still uh, there's still no opportunity for new buyers to get houses because we don't have more information about it, and we for that because the COVID time price will go down. Okay. So you think after COVID prices will go down, right? Okay, that's a good uh, good opinion. So we, we, we wait and we'll see if they do. But when COVID just started, everyone thought prices were going to go down, but prices have actually increased quite a fair bit during the COVID period, actually. Um, okay, I think, Afi, we just hit 10 o'clock. All and, right, perfect. Uh, and we've got might... time for another 90 seconds. We've got Ken really quickly, Sam, if you can just go to Ken. Okay. To wait quite patiently. Yeah, Ken, for... Ken, go for it. Hello, Stan. Hello, Hearty. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Can go Sorry, for I it. can't put my, my camera on. I've got I'm all over the house. Everybody's on Zoom in this house. All my kids are on Zoom. Everybody, my wife's on a different Zoom meeting. So <laughs> I've had to use a bedroom, which I don't want to kind of uh, expose to That's the world. That's fine. Okay. I, um, I'm a property investor. I've been investing in property for the last 25 years. Um, I'm in it for the long term. It's all about long term for me. Um, my personal experience, I've I got four companies. One of my company um, I had was an estate agency. Um, I'm actually doing development now. I do. Uh, uh, I use the BRRR model: uh, buy, refurbish, and uh, refinance, uh, mainly specifically on commercial. Uh, another one of my companies does uh, sourcing. So I've kind of got my finger in a few pies, and I I, I can uh, put my finger to the wind on a, a number of different. Um, uh, uh, different uh, situations. So here's what I've seen from an in, uh, from a estate agent's point of view. The the sentiment is that the sellers are very nervous. They're nervous and they're waiting around because they want to see what happens with uh, while this COVID dust blows over. Um, they're very nervous. They're thinking that they're not going to get good deals. The um, uh, government and uh, the market is saying that oh, it's going to go down. It's going to go down. So they're a bit nervous, thinking okay, we'll hang on until we can wait and get a good price and sell later. So they're sitting there, sitting tight. At the same time, you've got the government stimulating everywhere with the stamp duty. Uh, so they're stimulating the first-time buyers. What I'm seeing is that first-time buyers are competing with investors. First-time buyers are buying up all the stock that investors want to buy, but they're paying more than what investors would pay. That's what's happening, I've seen. I used to put offers on one or two properties and get them. Now I have to look at six before I can get the deals that I'm looking for. Um, however, as Sam said earlier on, uh, one of the biggest questions is when is the best time to buy? And I've been in it 25, the 1993, I bought my first property. The best time to buy is any time, providing the price, location, everything else fits and ticks the box. You have to have a checklist. If you don't have a checklist, you would just go and buy anywhere. You will go and buy, uh, uh, you know, you'll buy just blindly. You have to have a checklist. Know exactly what your goals are. Look at your exit strategy. Know what your exit plan is and then buy according to that. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it, it's, it's all about the right deal. It's about the right deal. Deals are out there, but instead of finding one or two, I have to now, like I said, look at six before I can take one. Absolutely, Ken. I, I couldn't agree more with you. Uh, you, 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 you you're spot on there. The first time buyers, especially in London, it's so difficult as, a, as an investor now in North London. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, like I said, we're trying to keep to, to 90 seconds. But I think because you were so good, we let you go above 90 <laughs> seconds. On the 90 seconds, that was, that was great. Um, thank you. So I think, yeah, so, so thank you, um, Ken. That was a very good. Uh, okay. I hope you, you still be on doing the Q&A. We can actually have I, I'll do my best. <laughs> Love to have you on the panel, actually. Yeah, be amazing. I'll do my best. Yeah. No problem. So, yeah, we, we always like people's opinions. Sam's we working on it. Definitely have an opinion, which is great. So um, without much further ado, I think, actually, you can um, um, uh, probably introduce Mike so that Mike can um, uh, kick off um, his presentation. 
Uh, and again, just before, uh, as IT is taking off his screen, we, um, oh, okay, I think uh, Yasmin is just... Um, is she online? Yeah, she's she not online. So Mike, just one second before you come on, we just gonna get um, Yasmin to, um, um, to just do a 90 second, is one of our sponsors. Okay, so, um, okay, so I've got, um, okay, um, Yasmin? Hi. Yes, you, you're on, uh, yes. Good to see you, Yasmin. So, thank you, good to see you too, thank you so much. So, so what, Sorry, I'm late. With... So, okay, you got your, um, your, your pitch, I'll let you go on, yeah. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Yasaman Asad. Uh, I'm from Ronald Fletcher Baker Solicitors. Um, I'm specialized in uh, real estate uh, property, residential and commercial financing and refinancing. Um, we are working um, uh, hands in hands with Auction House London for like two years now. And I'm more than happy to assist uh, anyone with any questions that they have in relation to the legal pack or after uh, you know, exchange of contracts for completion. Okay, so um, yeah, so um, uh, Yasmin, uh, hopefully you'll be around um, if we have any legal questions. Uh, Yasmin does a fantastic job. So thank you. She's just done a very difficult case for me. So thank you for, for <laughs> You're the, welcome. Uh, That's okay. that you put in. So, it's um, all right. Pleasure. Yeah, yeah. So great. Okay. Um, uh, and thanks for keeping it short and sweet. So um, again, we'll email you um, Yasmin's contacts if you need to do any conveyancing. You need uh, a legal pack to be uh, checked for you. Um, she, her turnaround time is very good. So we strongly, um, you know, we'll send your contacts to, to talk to Yasmin if you need um, her services. So, um, okay, so thank you, Yasmin. Um, uh, I think Ranji is not yet in, so Ati, I'll um, get on to the mic. That's fine. I think Mike's disappeared, actually. I'm not sure where he's gone. But we're going to go to the first presentation, which is for Mike. And I know he's he was on our last property question time as well. Um, He's going to be talking about social housing for 2021, some of the challenges that we faced. Um, a little bit about him. He is a property developer. He's a property investor as well. Um, and yeah, I, I'm really excited to have him on the panel as well. But I'm not sure where he's actually disappeared. Are you still here? There you are. All right, perfect. I am going to stop yeah, sharing my screen and I'm going to hand it over to you. Yeah, yeah. On my screen, I'm in between you and Sam. So I'm still here. <laughs> I'm not missed. All right, there you go. That's much better. So I am. Um, some does the auction term okay do the auction terms still apply if we place an offer and then then one then there's a different person that further goes to say if we place a pre-auction offer does the auctioneer have to disclose this to the vendor if it's way below the uh, uh the starting bid which i, I guess is the, the guide okay they're not that related but Quite similar. Okay, um, okay. Two yeah. questions. I'll deal with the issue. If you put a bid up to the vendor, uh, to the auctioneer prior to auction, um, the auctioneer is obliged to uh, advise the vendor of that offer unless he said, I'm not interested in any offers under a set level. So you might have a property with a guide price of 100 grand reserved at 110. He might say to the he might say to uh, vendor might say to the auctioneer, look, if you get any written offers under 110 grand, I'm just not interested. In, don't don't waste my time. That would be the first point. And if you buy a property before or after auction, um, then you generally almost always buy it on uh, auction contract terms, uh, similar to as if it being dropped down to you in the room. I think you've muted yourself. I think he has actually. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I was trying to make some arrangement for what to, I was trying to find out from auction house when they're coming live. So it's okay. I uh, think we've still got a bit of time with that, right? Uh, yes, I think. 15? Yeah, we, I was just trying to find out when they're coming yeah. live. Yeah. All right, we've got a Jack that's got his hand up. So I'm just going to invite him. Oh, he's put his hand down now, actually. I don't know if he's done that by mistake. Let's have a quick look. Um, no more raise hands. So we're just going to go back to the Q&A. Right. And then, um, because once we get we exhaust the questions, I'll, I'll probably do a quick presentation about um how to do auctions during COVID, just to cover the the time until the auction actually starts. So, um, Ati, just look through there. Let me just have a look at where. Sure, they, I think there's quite a lot that have been um asked and answered as well. Um, 
there's one question here. If a property doesn't sell at auction, do auction terms still apply? Yeah, if a yeah, offer is placed, that's been that asked, isn't it? That's been asked. Well, I think we've, I've gone through a lot of the questions, actually. Okay, I'm just going to open up the part, um, the event. For, um, okay, so let me see. Okay, um, David yeah. and um, Mike, maybe what we'll do, we can just get you to, um, uh, to sum up you know, make your closing remarks and then what i'll do then is like of course we've got a few minutes before the auction actually starts i'll run a presentation on how to uh do uh properties to sell and buy during COVID. uh but before that if you just want to share your thoughts for for 2021 um uh, mike you want to start yeah so my thoughts for 2021 is that it's going to be a good property year um i think Volumes potentially will go down. <clears throat> you know, we're in this bubble at the moment, in my view. And um, so for an investor next year, I think it's going to be an interesting market where there will be deals. Um, you know, I think volumes will go down. Those needing to sell will need to probably drop prices uh, to do so. So I think that in an imperfect market, those good properties will continue to maintain their price and continue to be good. But bad properties potentially are going to drop quite heavily in giving opportunities to do to for investors if they can see what they can do with the property um you know again commercial i think might be in that the high street if you can find a way as david was saying repurposing some of the this high street um i have various ideas around that um to to capitalize on that so i think that's an opportunity but really you know, as I think one of the audience actually summed it up very well, uh, it's always a good time to buy property. You just need to buy right in the first place to so get a good deal. Um, and I'd, I'd like to overlay that, that if you're holding for the long term, get a good income out of it as well. So focus on the income strategies and the market is out of your hand. But generally, history says over time and allow the time uh, property goes up in value. So be patient with that. Um, but make sure you're earning some good income in the meantime and understand what those strategies can be and multiple strategies potentially for any property and know your exit at the end as well as understanding what a deal is and make sure it's a deal. So it's a great time to buy, buy good deals. Okay, thank you, um, Mike. Um, in terms of the, um, the, the, train, the, the, the event that you have tomorrow, uh, people that are coming on the event, what can they expect to see that's different from today? <clears throat> yes, yeah, so the event tomorrow is going to go into more detail, some more explanation. I could only give top line on some of the strategies, so we'll be going more detail around the strategies, more stuff around tenants, more stuff around working with charities, um, which is where it is. Obviously, more time to answer. You know, there's, there's often a lot of questions that come through. There will be a repeat because there, a little bit of a repeat of some of the stuff because we've got new people on there as well. Um, but essentially, there's going to be more detail, so you've got more learning. And I find with social housing sort of repeating the same message helps it sink in because some i could see with because i went at such a pace today i could see some of the questions coming through there was a little bit of confusion whereas we've got the time to go into it and and um hopefully you should become more clear as to what the opportunity and, and how to do things are in the social housing market and that there are some quite different strategies and you can work in quite different ways that one would probably suit you and as i was saying earlier it's good to have different i think options to you um so that you remain in control and have have those options available to you uh, in these uncertain times okay okay good 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 <clears throat> so okay th thank you mike thank you for that um um uh, david any um uh, closing remarks or uh... yeah i would echo everything that mike said uh, about the market and auctions it's, it's a fast moving pace where you know deals are done within days of the property coming to the market but just remind you do understand what the guide price means don't bid on things which are going to go for a lot more than you think you can afford to pay and do do your due diligence so important as regards the market i think it's going to be very strong in auctions um prices change very quickly it's uh, you know it, they might an auctioneer might one month uh, want a pr property reserved at 150,000 and the next month 135 otherwise you won't take it it does move that quickly okay okay great great stuff yeah so um yes okay so what, what we've been talking i've been trying to um um communicate with, uh, with the team to see how close they are to to actually going live at 12 
which they, they, they're not. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm trying to get get my uh, screen back on. Yeah. So so what I'm going to do um, I, I would thank uh, you both, David uh, and Mike, for being on our panel. Um, and then um, yeah. So thank you again. And we look forward to having you both, Mike, tomorrow. We look forward to yes, having you. And then um, yourself, David. We'll have a chat. I think there yeah. seems to be quite a lot of things on technique on um on commercial properties. So it'd be quite good to have to put up something that we can focus on the commercial uh, side of um of, of the market early next year. So for now, thank you, gents, for okay. coming. Thank and um, no yeah, worries, so thank you. Um, thank awesome. you. Thanks for organising such a great event. Really, right. no thank worries, you. that's fine. Um, but like I said, I think we're going to do some training, uh, and uh, Dave is going to go through some trials as well. Um, and for everyone on the event, we've got. Mike tomorrow as well, so everyone's going to get the details on how to join that as well. Okay, okay. Brilliant. fantastic. Brilliant. Well, hopefully Thank I'll you. see a lot of you tomorrow. So, um, and nice to see you again, David. And thanks for inviting me on Sam and Arcee. So thanks very no much. Okay. Thank you. To see you right. Then what I'm going to do is um, <clears throat> I'm just going to um, um, do a quick run on um, on on on. Yeah, just to, to share on um, uh, how you do uh, property auctions during uh, COVID. Um, let me quickly share my screen to just make sure you can see um, what we have, because so that we can, we'll have a few more minutes before the auction actually starts. So let, let, me, let me see if I can share my screen. Um, yeah, it's, um, ready? To go, okay. Um, can you see my screen right now? Um, yes, I can, Sam. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do, um, I'll just uh, look through um, one of these um, uh, presentations here. I will actually just take this through um, very lightly and have a, a quick chat and pick up questions as we go along. So if anyone has any questions about the auction process, or anything on auctions or property um, um, acquisitions generally, if you can feel free to, to ask me at any time. Okay, generally, um, most auctions have slight differences from each other. Every auction has certain types of properties that we believe are more suited to that auction. So if you decide to sell your property, one of the key things that you need to do is uh, decide on which auction you want to take it to. Uh, and I think that choice of, of, of auction might actually um, be quite key uh, to, to, to what you do. Um, like, like David just said, Andrews runs auction house auction very differently from the way other auction companies run. So at times there's certain properties that might suit his style of, um, of sales uh, compared to other um, uh, properties. So if you do have a property to sell, we would actually work with you to make sure that we, um, uh, we actually uh, pick up the, um, um, the, the best um, auction for you. And even though all, every auction is gone online right now, I'm just going to go through these key things, how you, you, how you do auctions during uh, COVID. Um, you can see that there are different types of online um, auctions like David actually presented. So you need to actually look at which online articulation fits the property best. It might be the case where you think maybe it's an eBay style that fits the property or is Andros um, um, more streaming. So we would actually look at a particular property and look at which is the best um, uh, strategy for that property. Um, and then you have um, um, videos. Right now, if you're selling your property now during COVID, video has never been more important because first, you have, um, especially if your property is tenanted, you might have a tenant that resists people coming to view the, the property. Or in some cases, the buyer is actually scared to come in. So it's always good to have a good video. Um, and if, if, if some of you, if you're following on our social media, you see the videos that I do. When I do a property uh, a viewing um, a video, what I tend to do is I walk to the property from outside. I, I stand quite far from the property. I do a three, like a 360 degree turn on the street to, to show you the whole street. 
and then I show the full uh, view of the house. Then I walk towards that property. That way you have a chance to actually see what the property looks like. And I give you a feel of what it's like to actually walk in that property. So if you have videos um, that are shot that way, uh, and, and actually I'll, I'll probably share one or two videos with yourself from our YouTube channel. So you can see the way I shoot videos to make the viewer take them with you so they can actually see that you are actually giving them what we call a walkthrough experience of uh, of your property. Then, um, right now, during COVID periods, right now, more than ever, it's good to be flexible with your completion um, uh, time scales. If you went to an estate agent to sell a property, from the day you get an offer accepted, it might take a week, two, three weeks before the two solicitors engage. You have absolutely no control. But when you sell at auction, you have control. Standard auction conditions require that you actually complete within 28 days of the auction. But being COVID period, at times uh, lenders are slow, solicitors are slow, there might be a bit of delay. So if you were to sell a property and you make your completion time a bit more flexible, if you make it maybe instead of four weeks, you make it eight weeks or 10 weeks or give it as long as you can, um, unless you have to sell, um, it makes your property a lot more uh, sellable because more people will actually bid on your properties because they know they have the time to actually put their finances together. So if you are, if you have the luxury of deciding how long you actually complete your property. Let's take for uh, as an example, if you're selling a HMO property with tenants in there, if you delay the completion instead of 28 days or four weeks, you make it maybe um, um, eight weeks or 12 weeks completion. That gives you maybe two or three more months to actually have um, your, your rents while the buyer has more time to put their finances together. But being at auction, you can say, 12 weeks or sooner so if a buyer comes as 100 percent cash they can do it a lot quicker they, they, they do not have to wait for the um, um for the whole duration of the um, um uh, of the um, um the, the 12 weeks but by giving a longer completion period for your property it makes your property a lot more sellable because a lot of people that would not have bought from auction now feel more empowered to buy from auction because they can actually go through a uh, normal mortgage and buy your property. Um, so if you're not rushing or, or if you have a tenant, you'll be collecting rents or if you live in the property yourself, you just want to get the most money for yourself. You're not in a chain that we a sensible thing to do to actually um, uh, give a much longer completion time. Um, then um, the, the, the um, next suggestion uh, that I would suggest to you is, um, let me just see, I think I'm not running out of power on my laptop. Yeah, the, the next suggestion for you, if you're selling um, during COVID, is to engage your tenants. Um, if, okay, just, just, just hold on one second. Oh, wow, just midway through my presentation, my Windows is actually asking to reboot itself for an, for, for an update, and I've said now, maybe later. Okay, that's very kind of uh, of my windows to ask me. Yeah, okay. Um, if you are selling a property that has tenants in it, I, number six, I strongly suggest that you engage your tenants as soon as possible. Before you put a property on, you go around, take a pack of chocolates, take a bottle of wine, just go around and be nice to them because you need them a lot more than they need you now. Because tenants, most tenants are actually waiting for an opportunity to have power over their landlord and then they will exercise it. So if you are very nice to your tenants, be nice to them, go to them, engage them upfront and seek their permission for viewings. You can either say to them, you can book viewings during a time when they could all be out um, or if, there's, if it's a HMO and there's a garden, they can all go to the garden for 30 minutes while people come in and do viewings, especially when there's a valuation, because most valuers that do go in now, they request that the whole property be vacated. 
they want the whole property vacant no one in the property and they want all the doors and all the windows open so that the the uh the valuer can come in and would touch a minimum number of doors so if all the doors are open they can walk into a room stand in the middle with a with a gadget they measure the size of the room without touching anything so what the um um so for you to get all your tenants out of that room you need to be very super super nice for them to be that flexible um so i'm going through just waiting for rt to give me the indication when auction house is about to start so that we can go back to auction house um now the so we've got flexibility on viewing slots if you are selling your property to give yourself the maximum um, um, um ability to sell your property you need to be very flexible with viewings um at times you can see some of the big auction companies if they their viewing will be every Tuesday at 10 o'clock for the next three Tuesdays, the big auction companies are like conveyor belts. They put a property in that say we're viewing 10 a.m. for the next three weeks. So if there's someone that does a school run in Ealing and your property is in, in Tottenham, they might never get there for 10 o'clock, three or four weeks. So it doesn't matter how many. 10 o'clock viewings you have, they will never be there on at 10 o'clock. So it's very important that if you're selling your property to give yourself the most chance of selling. If you have maybe a 10 o'clock viewing this week, the next week you give it, you do a, maybe a 4 p.m. And then the, the week after you make you make a 12 o'clock viewing so just so that you can accommodate as many people as possible. Because bear in mind that you are the one selling. Because when, we, when we're selling properties for clients, when I call them to, um, uh, to to set up viewing slots, they at times they feel like they're doing me a favor. When I'm asking, requesting flexibility, they think they're doing a favor, uh, they give doing me a favor, but the, the, the fact of the matter is that we are trying to get you the most um, um, out of um, the um, uh, your property. Like I said, I always say us, the middle people, we, have all the responsibility but we have absolutely zero authority but when things go wrong at times the media person that takes the uh the, the, the blame then the next bit is the legal pack if you're selling your property at auction make sure like david said you have a solicitor that has auction experience you make sure that you have the the, the legal pack very comprehensive you make sure the, the, the legal pack is actually put in as soon as possible don't leave it to the, the week before because if you do that people will not have time to actually look at the, the the legal pack and there are lots of people out there that will not even go to view a property if they haven't seen the, the, the legal pack so i would strongly suggest that you get a legal pack that's very comprehensive um if you're selling a property where you live in the it's a freehold. There are certain documents that are expected in the, in, the, in the legal park. If you're selling a property with a tenant, there are certain properties that, if, that would give a buyer comfort, like the tenancy agreement, uh, if, the lease if it's a flat. If you are selling a property that is lived in by multiple tenants, like a HMO, there are a few things that say, what we do when I do uh, workshops on, on, um, on, on, on auctions, I will actually provide you a, a list of what you need to actually be able to sell uh well at auction so i think again these are my impromptu uh eight ways to help you sell your property at auction i did this presentation just on the fly to make sure that we're using the time effectively while waiting for the auction um, to come so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, um uh, maybe stop sharing the screen for now and then try to take some questions let me see um because i let me see what my, my laptop is doing just just give me one second and then let me see if any anyone has any questions on on the auction process okay so great okay yeah um yeah, i think um Yes, so having just gone through a quick presentation on how best to sell a property, do we have any questions at all?
let me see in the Q&A if, if there's any questions that have come in. Just having a quick look for you, Sam. Yeah. So, um, um, I've got some wonderful any, remarks, though, for you. Any update? Just having a quick look. I've, I've just got loads of messages um, from people that have been following the webinar. And I have to say that it's been an amazing webinar. they have had learned a lot of insights as well from that. Okay. Um, right, just going through. <clears throat> Okay, there's uh, one here. So, does a charity require HMO license? Yeah. Okay, I think the, um, we can uh, get um, those will be answered tomorrow evening. Um, um, thanks. Yeah. Um, so, Mike is on the call tomorrow, so he will be able to answer that question. I will be sending everyone the link for the Zoom. Um, for post auction property, the auction rules still apply. Is yes, that's been answered as okay. well. Um, and no new questions come through, Sam. Yeah. Actually, okay. So yeah. So so that's um um. Okay, I'm going to ask, um, actually, just can you just find out from Auction House um, how close they are to, to actually um, 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 yeah, start in? just give me uh, a moment. Okay. Um, so if not, I'll do. I'm going to ask, um, again, I'm going to go back to, to the, um, on the, uh, the market analysis. Um, who on the call is actually on, on, on the market buying a property right now? Because I just want to find out your experience. Who's actually buying right now? You can just raise the hands and, yeah. Yeah, I just I want someone that can raise their hands and just uh, give us a quick um, a view of what they what they're doing right now on the market. Um, is there any hands? I think they've started the auction, Sam. Oh, they started now. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, they've actually started. Switch. They've just can, gone live now, actually. They've just gone live now. Okay, let me. Sorry um, about that, guys. Okay. Okay. Let Let me just um uh, turn to that EIG. Okay, then I can share it. They've actually started a little bit earlier than usual. No, no, it, it, I think he was yeah. actually trying to get, get it going. But it's 12 of today, were they? Do you want to do it on your... Look, I was falling. Let, let me... Um... So what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to stream the um, auction, the live okay. auction on the webinar as well. So it gives you guys an insight to see what is being sold at auction. And of course... Okay, so live stream. Okay. Okay. okay, so, okay, let me share the screen. It's a stick floor, two bedroom flat, after we vacant possession. We can hear it, but we can't see it, Sam. Okay, yes, now I'm going to share it now. All the actions on the internet for this one. So let's start this one, shall we? Who's here at Guy? Can I say 165 anywhere? Okay. 165. Thank you for waiting. 170. Okay, let me um quickly um. Seven four R six twelve the Vista building. You, you're not seeing it yet, are you? No, we can't see. You, you're still not seeing it, yeah? Okay, let me no, um. Sir. Okay, let me let me just get the um. Okay. Okay, let me um share. Let me share the right screen in a, in a minute. Okay. Are you seeing it now? Yeah, now we can see it, Sam. Thank you for that. 171. For the very first time, then at 169, I'll take, uh, I'll take a single. Can I bring any random bit back in for 1,000 now? I'll take 170. And then 169,000 pounds. For the second time, at 169,000 pounds, 612 the Vista building. Are we all done for the third and final time then at 169,000 pounds? Any more? I can see some hovering. I'm just going to give you a few extra seconds. Not quite. We're only. Oh, we are. Thank you. 170 is there. 171. 171. The other two of you. All three of you were literally waving your mouse pads. I'm looking for 171. Back against you, Mr. A now, with a Mr. J. If not, then for the very first time at 170 Sorry. now. If you, if, you, if you watch now, you can see what uh, um, David was talking about. Okay, 
guys, if you look at it at Andrew doing this, you can see just exactly what David was saying. You can see him looking at it saying, you're moving your mouse because he can see on his screen that people are moving their mouse about to bid. So it's quite very intelligent software that David has with EIG. So just continue. Quite a bit as our day on this, 42 hour notice. We've got Jordan and Jamie Weir on the phone. Um, it's 44 Art Fillon Road in Catford. It's a vacant three bedroom in Terrace House, probate sale. Um, again, I, I had to write this addendum only as a courtesy, really. I, I think there was a slight confusion for one particular bidder as to whether this was leasehold or freehold. As you can see, it's freehold. Of course, it's freehold. Um, so that's what the addendum just confirms. It was really just to correct one particular individual who asked the question. So there you go. A uh, freehold, vacant, three bed, mid terrace house. Let's uh, let's start with this one, shall we? The guide is four hundred and twenty-five thousand uh, pounds. Two on the phone. Anyone on the internet? Four two five. Thank you. Four thirty. Then. 413 neck, actually Mark on the screen just jumped down and oh no that's it, I can see it now, thank you. 430, uh, we'll, I'll come back to you in a moment then. You keep trying. 435, anyone? 435, anyone else? Thank you. 440 now. Thank you, 445. Excellent, 450. I'll come to the phones in a minute. You guys just leave them there until, uh, until the internet sort of dries up a bit. 450 is bid. 455 is bid. 460. 460, anyone? Excuse me. No, we're all done then at 455,000. It has slowed down. I'll take two. I'll jump, shall I go four, six? No, I don't need two. I've got a 460. I'll go in twos now. I was going to do it. No, 465. No need. 470. 46. I've got up. Leave, leave what you're doing now. 467, I'll take. We're at 465. I'll take 467. Thank you. 469. The two thousands are more palatable. We'll go up in twos. 469 on your phone then, George. I'll remind me that you're in. 471. 471 on the internet. Any of you? Thank you. 473. New bit of other looks at it. 473, George. Thank you. 475 to any of the internets. Can I say 475 anywhere? Thank you very much indeed, Mr. M. 477, George. It has been on the internet instead. 479. Oh, I'm going to stay on the internet now. 481. 481. Okay, we're at 483 then. 485, anybody? Is B. 487, George. Thank you. 489. Is there? 491, George. We have 493. Okay, it's 491. I'm looking for 493 anywhere. Do you want me to go up in singles? Is that what everyone's waiting on? Go on, we're going up in ones now. So 492 I'll take. If not, are we all done then? At 491,000? No, we're not. 492. 493, George. Thank you. 494 to my internet bidders. This bid, thank you, Mr. M. 495, George. Is there on the phone? 496. We're looking for 496,000 pounds. Thank you. 497. Thank you. 498. 499. 
and then we'll say 500. 500, Mr. M. It's up to you. Right now it's 499,000 pounds uh, on the phone. For the very first time, we're at 499,000. What are you hovering for? Do you want me to go 499 and a half? Is 500 a big barrier mentally for you? I'll take it. 499 and a half is there. 500. 500 is on the phone. 500 and a half now. Anybody on the internet want to make it 500 and a half? If not, with Jordan then. Once at 500,000. Twice. That's 500,000 pounds. Everybody else finished for the third and final time then. Uh, 500,000 lots. Number three. Are we all done? I think we are, aren't we? Sold to your phone, George. 500,000. Okay, lot number four then uh, is 54 Brunswick Crescent in New Southgate. It's a vacant two bedroom mid terrace house. I've just, uh, someone's got their hand up. Yes, someone wants me. No, we're good. Uh, yes, there's three phone bids on this one. Could you help me on the phones? Thank you. So we've got three phone bidders, but I'll just tell you about this one. It's actually the only lot in the whole catalogue that I saw my own self with my own eyes. Uh, great auction lot, lovely house in a nice area, quite a little uh, road it is, and it literally backs straight onto a park. You kind of walk out of um, a little gate in the back and you are in this lovely park, which I tried to depict my myself. Uh, I looked behind me for a screen. We took the screens away, didn't we? I tried to depict it myself. Those of you looking online with uh, a, a, a printed catalogue, you'll see there's a, with a slide between lovely. So um, I'm only walking so I'm on my phone for this to get online. I think they are now, finally. So two bed mid terrace house, guiding this one at three. Uh, please note there is uh, an addendum on this one, just to state there's a 1% plus fat buyer's premium in addition to the uh, admin fee. So, uh, you're bidding with that in mind. All the phone bidders are aware of that. Three phone bidders, can you tell me they all have read the addendum? 1% buyer's premium. Yes, everyone knows. Weary? That person wants the bid. I know the first name that you just said there. So can you keep trying, please? All right, I'm going to get started because there's so many others of you. So it's uh, it's ready to go. Then lot number four. While Jamie Weir uh, keeps going on the phone, listen, guys. If you're at home and you've got a phone bid for later and you're thinking about going out to the shops or whatever quickly now, do not not do not not have your phone with you or not pick it up from a, an 0207 number that you might not recognise because it will be up. Holding it, holding it. So if you registered to bid on the phone, make sure you pick up the phone. It's, Quite obvious. Uh, here we go. Brunswick Crescent, guiding up three. Start me there. Anyone on the internet? Loads of you on this one. Three. Straight in. Three five. Three ten. You're all racing forward. Three fifteen. Three third. Uh, three twenty. Sorry. Thank you. Three twenty five. Three thirty. Three thirty. Anyone? Thirty on the phone then three thirty five. Three thirty five, thank you, three forty. Three forty. All right, the bid's currently at three hundred and thirty five thousand pounds, fifty four Brunswick. Thank you, three forty is on the phone, three forty five. Three forty five may I say back to my internet bidders, loads of you. Are we all done there? Three hundred and forty thousand pounds with Jordan for the first time in at three forty. Three forty-five now. Thank you. Three fifty. Three fifty. I can hear Jordan. Three fifty. Thank you. Three fifty-five. A 
lots of uh, uh, lots of internet bidders still online. Any of you want to make this three fifty-five for me? I don't mind breaking into twos. If, you, uh, if you'd rather go up in twos, that's fine. We're quite clearly going to sell at three fifty if that's the highest bid we get. So, if anyone wants to make this three five two, let me know. If not, for three hundred and fifty thousand, then the very first time at three fifty. 352 is now bid. Can I say 354? Two of you tried to bid 352 simultaneously. The computer will obviously only take one of you. It's, uh, you already want to do this in ones? Go on then, as it's you, Jordy. 353 is on the phone. I'm going up in ones now. 354. 354. Thank you, Miss N. You've just beat a Mrs. E to it. 354. 355, anyone? We're looking for 355. What you could do, possibly, is if you've got headphones and stick the headphones on it, maybe that will reduce the noise. Oh, that's pretty much a female battle on the internet. Mm. People from hearing you. Yeah. 357 is where we're going then. I thought the police coming on 356. Oh, no, it's all right. So you play around with this, I'm going to let you know. This is easy. Would you like to come in for 357? They've got £356,000 there for the very first time at 356. All right, Sam. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. No, I can hear you, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, All right, so uh, I've been asked to go up in half, which I will do because it is, uh, it is my duty. No, it's fine. Can I hear auction house? It's very low, the volume. That's better. Yeah. That's better. Yep. But anyone hearing you? Yeah. 360, may I say. The bid is coming in at 9,500 pounds for the first time then. It's with you right now, Mrs. E. I'm looking to you, Miss N. For the second time at 359 and a half. Are we all? No. Wow. 360 and a half. 360 and a half, may I say. Perhaps. But yeah, I can't hear. For the first time then at 360 now. For the second time at 360, everybody else out. All the phones have gone. Did you get hold of yours? Mm -hmm. Have you checked the board to see if they put a declared match? No, it says an end. So it didn't. In which case, for 360,000 pounds, are we all done for the last time with you, Miss N? Mrs. E, are you out? Is everybody else out? I'll give you three or four seconds. This is it. You can frantically involved in this one. Let me know if you're coming back in. If not, it's going to go. Oh, you're hovering. I'm trying to be nice. Do you want to pay another 500? Yes or no? I'm going to count you down from five, four, three. You're now telling me to hold. Two, one. Where are you? Trying that lady one more time. Sorry, one set. No. In which case, Miss N, you have beaten everyone else fair and square. Well done. It's yours. 360, wasn't it? Uh, right, not five sold prior. Uh, that was uh, done a while ago. That was Lanark. So we're now on to lot six. Uh, and this is 20A Hayland Close in Kingsbury. It's a vacant first floor, two bedroom flat. Uh, this comes with a guide price of £225,000. Uh, no, no, let's see where we go. I've got a proxy on this one as well. So again, if required, I'll be doing some bidding. Uh, so it's all the internet and me. No phones uh, on this one. Who wants to start me at 225 at home? Can I say 225 anywhere? 225 is bid, thank you. Uh, 230, I guess I'll take 230 for the proxy. 235? Mr. A, you want to go 235? You do. I'm going to go 240 then. Can I say 245? 
245 is you. I can go 250. You can go, uh, do you want to go 255? 255, may I say? Where would you like to go next? Two others uh, here hovering. You want to go 252? Two so I break it into twos? Does it help any of the internet if I break it into twos? For the very first time, they're at 250 on my proxy. For the second time at 250, I'll go straight into heart. I'll take a 500 if it helps. If it helps anybody back home at 250 and a half now, I'm not even going into one, I've gone straight to heart. If not, I am selling, be very clear. It's going to go to the proxy at 250 then the third and final time. Are we all done on hail and close? Everybody else finished? I think we are, aren't we? All right, that's sold to the proxy bidder at 250. Okay, excellent. I was just going to make a comment about that property that just been sold uh, on Helen Avenue. I, I I was I was interested in that property for one of my clients. Uh, seven but, Lincoln Avenue in Southgate, uh, popular uh, North London location. But we just didn't buy it because of the fees from from the legal park. Um, loads of probates in today's auction, actually, and. Uh, those of you watching who have given those all to us, we thank you for your instruction. Six hundred thousand. No, there.